All right. This is the first time that I try to do a proper live stream. So um, please be patient with me if ever <laughs> it's not working well. But okay. I think we've got we've we've got this going. Okay. Um, All right. This is the first oh, time that I try to do a. There we go. I'll have to pause that. Um, so uh, what I've been wanting to do this for a while. It's uh, I've been playing around a lot with chat GPT for all kinds of different things. And uh, I noticed it actually knows more than I would have thought about Ableton Live. So um, I wanted to play play around and find some. And actually, the first question that I had, and this is how it all it all started. I had uh, tell me something weird about Ableton Live. And I wasn't really expecting much. And then it started to bring up stuff about um, uh, some Easter eggs. And I tried them. None of them were. There we go. We, it's actually talking. Every time I ask it, it gives a different answer. But uh, there are two of them. And no, actually, OK, no, they're just mentioning the Easter egg. There's uh, one of them. One of them had a, an, a different Easter egg than this one. Um, Man, I can't even remember what it was. But anyway, so same this uh, Amen Break one, um, Amen Break, Amen Break. I don't know how you pronounce it, but um, this one I've tried and I've never been able to get it to work. But let's see if okay, this is a different one than it brought up last time. It says if you type that into the search bar, and I actually played around with one of the Easter eggs that it, it had about this, and uh, I can't remember what it was supposed to do, but I loaded it up, I tried everything, nothing worked, so I, I'm assuming some of these things worked in very, very early versions, and uh, yeah, I think I, I have one around somewhere, I don't, I don't know if it would ever install on, uh, on a computer I have, but uh, anyways, so they say, this is a pretty easy one, um, uh, they say if you search, if you type it into the search bar and press enter, the search results will show a small graphic of the MN break. Okay. It will do, I don't know if it has to be in caps like that, but MN break. Oops, break. And hit enter. And I don't see any sort of a waveform. So I'm assuming this one doesn't work anymore. And, uh, Let's just do something else. The warping feature. You can bring stuff to extreme lengths, so that's not really anything weird. We'll ask weirder. You can make weird sounds. That's even weirder. Like the first time I tried this, it brought some really interesting stuff. But some of it didn't didn't work. But uh, yeah, today is not the day for weird stuff on ChatGPT. Um, the random. It's not an officially named feature, but it refers to a, pheno a phenomenon where, oh, where, sorry, I s got mixed up for a sec. Um, users discover unexpected and often humorous results when using certain functions. Some were rapidly click and drag the mouse cursor over different parameters or button you might encounter unexpected. Yeah, that's probably sort of like if you have a delay and you start playing around with uh, with the feedback or something, and while you're while it's it's got some sound going through, it'll come out weird sounds. Um, no, we need. I would like to know something really weird about it. No, we're not going to get anything, <laughs> anything weird about it. Um, okay, so... Um, 
Let's do a new conversation. We'll do a little bit more functional. Um, what are the most underrated devices in Ableton Live? Actually, no, we'll ask what is, what is the most underrated device and go from there. Chord MIDI lets you play a single note. Yeah, that's okay. Let's let's try that. I uh, I got a plugin called Polymax a little while back, and I haven't had a chance to play around with it nearly enough. So let's use that. Go. E flat minor for today. Um, and let's do a lead. Oops. Yeah, we'll do lead and polyphonic to make sure we can. Ooh, this one's nice. Okay, let's work with this one. I said, it's called Chord MIDI. It's true that it's underrated. I th I think I've used it in the past. MIDI effects, probably. Oh, it's just Chord. Yeah, I use that a lot. But anyways, okay. We'll load it with nothing. And one thing I like with this is, so you've got your your normal whatever whatever note you have. If you want to make it instantly sound bigger, bring this one to minus 12, this one to plus 12. So any note you play will play an octave up. Actually, you know what? This one at 11 sounded really nice. Oh, that one, <laughs> not so good. Anyways, sometimes it'll be in key, sometimes it'll be out of key, so. So this is the note, just playing the same note. We're just playing this. All of a sudden it's got just some life to it. And uh, then we can So this is the original note. This is a, yeah, this is nice. I should save this. I, I'm going to save, <laughs> uh, we'll call it fancy chord, I guess. Okay. So, okay. Chat GPT. That is a, that's a good one. Um, let's try another one. So another one. So we're looking for underrated devices in Ableton Live. Multiband dynamics. And yeah, so underrated. A lot of people tend to use this one, but let's try it on here. We'll we'll do what it what it suggests. Do 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 do. So um we're going to go to audio effects, multiband dynamics. And a lot of people use it for this one, for the OTT setting, especially in house music. Oh, that does sound a lot. <laughs> it does sound a lot better. This is just with, <laughs> with no adjustments, anything. Okay. I'm liking this. Um, let's go for another. Frequency shifter. And this one, I know of it, and I've used it. Frequency shifter. Oh, you know what? They changed it to shifter, I think. Yeah, there we go. Um, I haven't played around with this one very much, so maybe this is our our opportunity. Let's... Uh, Try tremolo on here. See, 
Try putting it before the OT. Oops. So this is how a lot of people would use it, is as a bit of a ring modulator. I don't like this. I don't necessarily like this, but it does something interesting, that's for sure. Yeah. I'm not sure that I like this one. So, I can hardly notice the difference. I don't notice a big difference. Oh, I like this. I don't know. I think it's better without. Okay, so I'll leave this one off for now. Let's go back in here and see another. Beat repeat. This could be an interesting one. So. And anytime I use this, I tend to just throw it on there and not really try anything. I just, I just turn it on there and see what it, what it'll do. But, uh, it'd be nice to sit down one day and really figure out what, what it can, uh, what it can do. I think we have to have it on play possibly. did something there let's go to squishy it's a funny name for it. so yeah I'd have to sit here and figure out what what each of these <laughs> do so maybe that'll be a, a project for another day It gives it an interesting little sound. You sort of tell, I don't know, if you're listening with headphones, you can sort of tell. It's almost like a... Sort of like a little voice in the background that goes, Ew. Anyways, that's sort of not bad. Oh, let's go for another one. And we'll try a different question afterwards. Oh, I hadn't seen that. So the beat repeat, they say some ways you can use it that are interesting for uh, stutter and glitch effects, um, which we figured pretty easily. Uh, build tension and transitions. That'd be an interesting way to use that when, it, when it's building up to have it, you're probably adjusting the speed. So, you know, so that snare gets faster and faster or whatever it is, whatever sound it is you have in there. And as a live performance tool, I could totally see that. Okay. Now the next one is the resonator. It's a little bit close to the other one we had, but why not? Resonator. I, uh, I tend to make a lot of typos when I'm using this keyboard because I use this key this computer pretty well exclusively for for music and video production stuff so um the the yeah I'm not used to typing a lot on it I'm used to doing stuff with the the trackpad and Ableton push and this little thing I got for <laughs> to simplify the video editing a little a little while back so um so yeah i know how to type trust me okay so oh i sort of like this you know for this type of sound um i'm so used to doing chords on here i forget that we've got the chords thing still set up um So yeah, if I like this sound better without this, but let's try a few uh, few presets just to get started. 
gives it a completely different feel, but could be useful for, for some stuff. Ooh, no, don't like that one. So if you use the resonator, let me know like what you use it for. What what are some interesting uses we could get out of it? And uh and even what which which of these we should be playing around with first. Like seems like every plugin has two or three knobs that do 80% of the job and uh, sounds like this one is for the delay on here it just brings or the decay that is a nice sound though but no I like our sound before <laughs> and uh, okay let's see I had uh, let's try this one Tell me something nobody knows about Ableton Live. The interesting thing with this, though, is it actually does have a lot of information about Ableton Live, and it had more than I expected, because I've asked it a whole bunch of stuff over time, and um, it, it, it knows a lot more than, you know, than just what's in the manual, so... Um, okay, something nobody knows, uh, has a hidden fit, hidden carrier resampling, any audio track, or vocoder carrier resampling, it's a hidden feature, isn't that just what every vocoder is? Okay, we'll try. Insert a vocoder audio effect onto a track. We'll do it. Actually, I noticed they said uh, we're gonna freeze and flatten at some point. So I'm gonna duplicate this and do it on here. So we're not, okay. So let's go to the vocoder. And Okay, that's just with the noise carrier. And uh, let's just get back here. In the vocoder sidechain chooser, select the track you want to use as a carrier signal. Okay, the so carrier signal. Okay, we might need two. Um, I want to be smart about this. We'll do a uh, drum. I'll just add some sort of, or do a little loop. Okay. Okay, so we'll use this. And then I'm assuming, we've got the vocoder on here. We will do, not external. Oh yeah, external. And then we'll do 12. I'll have to hit play. Oh, there we go, we gotta hit play on here. So we wanna turn off the sound here and go back in here. So that's just a regular vocoder. <laughs> I'm not sure what it's. So right click on the track title and choose freeze track. Oh, okay. After these steps, the audio track, the audio track you selected will become the carrier signal for the vocoder. Okay, let, I don't know, let's try it. So it doesn't say to play anything. Okay, we'll just freeze and flatten this. And I 
Oh, wait a second. What happened to... Shouldn't it give us a waveform? I don't know. <laughs> I'm bored of this one already. <laughs> okay. Oh, probably, yeah, because we weren't, we didn't play anything. Okay, so that's right. That, no, because then we don't have access to the... Okay, and the side change chooser. Yeah, like, this doesn't work. We have to have... Okay, well, let's try it. Hey, we'll undo these. Undo this. And, well, okay. So, didn't, didn't record the MIDI. Let's try it again. All right. So let's try freezing and flattening. And then, but then the vocoder is gone. Unless it's the other one we need to do. You know what? This will be uh, for a different day. Let's do uh, something else. Um... Yeah, we're talking about the multiband compressor again. So, okay, let's ask it to make something. So, let's do, help me make a, um, Super saw lead with Serum and Ableton Live. Oops, Super's lead. Super saws. Okay, I figured it out anyways. Okay. Um, okay, so let's follow these steps. So we're going to go here. I think I have Serum loaded already on here. Okay. So, let's get back to this. Activate multiple voices, usually seven to nine. So that's the first thing we would do. So we're gonna go, let's do nine, because we're looking for super saw. It's already sounding, it's already sounding okay. So we wanna detune a little bit. close to where it was is fine. And uh, we'll choose a wavetable. So classic choices, you know what? I don't even think I ever noticed the one called Super Saw in here. Digital, I'm guessing. Sub bass, no. Spectral. I don't see any called Super Saw. Classic choices include Super Saw Square or Saw. We'll just go. Saw rounded to square, maybe? We could, oh no, we don't want that. Oh, I'll just go. Like there's a saw one built built into the basic shapes, but subby saw. I don't mind this one actually. I'm wondering if the the other one they mentioned is in the basic shapes because if you go here and you change the position, you know what? Though I I like that other one. Let's go back to 
Oh, I hope I... Oh, Subby saw. There we go. I'm assuming it's going to tell us to use uh, the second oscillator. But no, maybe not. I think we sh should, but let's do it their way. Um, okay, so we chose a wave table. And then we want to blend between different wave tables. So they're saying. No. It's much better at zero. Apply a low pass filter. Filter, low pass, and um, adjust the cutoff and re resonance to shape the sound, modulate and cutoff. So, I like having the whole, like, it sounds so nice. I don't want to cut anything off, but we're going to use an LFO and Actually, you know what we might what we might do here is guess we want to I use a second envelope okay so what we're gonna do here is remove the destination and we're gonna take this envelope here to see So you can tell the beginning of the note every time I hit a note. It's weird. I don't like resonance and I've never liked it, especially when I, from the first time I learned about it was uh, with this keyboard here years and years ago. And uh, it's uh, the Yamaha DJX one or something. And it's made for, for house music it's basically a sort of synthesizer it, you can't fix a whole bunch of stuff but uh it's got it's got some really good sounds in it anyways so it has a resonance uh, knob and a cutoff knob and i've never ever liked the resonance. and i don't know if it's like i've never even really talked to people about it like i don't know if it's something that bugs everybody's ears but i don't know my ears don't don't like resonance at all. Um, okay, so. But uh, let's try, we'll still try this on the resonance and see. No, I don't really like it that much on the resonance, but. Okay, we'll leave it here. Maybe we'll give it a little bit of drive on that. Oh, sorry about your ears. <laughs> okay, no, let's not do that. And, uh, okay. So, okay, so we'll go back to ChatGPT and see what... Okay, so we've got the low pass filter going. Create an amp envelope, which is sort of what we just did. Um, to control, the, yeah, that's basically what we just did. Modulate the filter and pitch. So modulate the filter cutoff, which we just did. And uh, <laughs> I, I tend to like start with this. I, I keep going and I tend to forget that, um, yeah. I'm following instructions. It's like uh, when you build Ikea stuff, it's like you want to get past that and you, you got to keep going back because they do this weird stuff on how you set it up. And uh, 
And if you're not following it, if you put this before this, then the whole thing will fall apart or you'll get to the end and nothing will work. But anyways, um, okay, so modulate. Uh, so we did the cutoff, the pitch we didn't do. So um, and uh, I guess we'll use the same one. What we might do is actually just put it on the fine. I don't know if I, it's a little bit too much. Oh, this does sound pretty nice. Um, okay, so. A little bit too much still. Just a little touch. Yeah, I like that. Um, okay, so we'll add some effects. Reverb, delay, chorus. Now, I don't know what it is, but and it's probably the only thing I don't like in Serum is the reverb. And I've talked to people about it, and they're like, I love the reverb in there. So I think it's just me, but anyways. I don't love the sound of the... Okay, so you know what we're gonna do here is, oh no, maybe it's gonna talk about, no, okay, it won't. So what we're gonna do is go back to the beginning here. Let's bring this uh, fancy chord into where were we here we go okay that's not bad there might be just a little bit too much so let's remove maybe we'll remove Sort of like the. No, this one's good. Maybe just remove one of these. <laughs> Every time I remove something. Every time I remove something, I'm like, no, I liked it better before. I think we're good with this one. Um, okay, so. This isn't really a chord. Like, it's basically just playing the, the note and then just basically adding one because it's the other ones are octaves so it's basically the same note higher and lower but I, I'm trying to figure out which which one i like better i like the reverb better on this plate but i find it makes a sound a little bit brighter and Okay, all right. I removed a little bit of of the lower octave. It sounds a little bit clearer. Okay, so this let's try the hall again. Which one's better? I think this one's better. Okay, we'll go with the hall. And they were saying, uh, I think they said delay, right? There we go, we're up here. Reverb, delay, chorus. So we'll, uh, we'll add some delay. Sometimes using, 
I like sometimes using just a little bit of uh, like having the the dry wet just a, a little bit, but having it ping ponged. So if you're listening on headphones, you'll sort of hear it. You'll sort of hear so you'll sort of hear it bouncing from one side to the other. This is starting to sound nice. They said chorus. I don't like a lot of chorus, but Yeah, this is sounding nice actually. Um, okay, let's leave it at there. Uh, leave it there for the uh, the effects, and then we're gonna modulate the filter and pitch. Let's modulate the filter cutoff and pitch with an envelope. We sort of did that already. Yeah, we did that already. Um, let's go back here. So this here, this envelope two, is modulating the uh, the filter cutoff and the pitch. Yeah, that's right. We did that already. We've got the cutoff here and the pitch here, both being done by this okay so um oh, am i going back <laughs> that's why okay all right um so the eq and uh we'll shape the frequency balance let's just use the ableton eq8 i, I like this one because you can uh you really see what you're doing so if we were putting this in a track, we'd probably want to do this and get rid of the the lows so it's not fighting with the bass. I don't mind leaving it in for this because it does it does sound nice. So what do they say to do with the EQ? Anything? Boost the highs for brightness, cut to any unwanted frequencies. So we can do a, a high shelf here. too much of it anyways but and if we notice any weird frequencies here we would we could just sweep anyways then take them out but we're just going to leave it as is it's something we can do is eq stuff and then uh adjust the parameters so fine-tune parameters like the unison voices detune amount filter settings until you achieve the, the sound you like This is interesting because when we think about what we started with, it was nothing even remotely close to this. We were able to do this in not very long at all. Okay, so. I don't, I don't think there's anything to adjust. And uh, yeah, I don't see anybody saying, okay, <laughs> make sure you fix... Uh, remove uh there's one too many unison voice i don't know um okay so uh the unison voices i mean we can play around with the unison voices see what happens if we add a little bit more but i'm just gonna bring this down a little bit it's nice when we add more it's really nice actually but i find that that's where the bass gets a little bit too much Especially because we're using uh, the that that chord MIDI that ChatGPT told us to use, and uh, we're adding an octave down. So what I want to do though is it it ends a little bit too just kind of a little bit of sustain. Of uh, a release, not sustain, sorry. So we're... If we add... So when we let go, it doesn't let go right away. Now I have a pedal here. I don't know. I don't know if the pedal helps at all, but anyways. So we've got this going, and... Uh, okay. Group and process. Group the serum with an audio effect rack. Add saturation you know what we might do is why don't we just go back to what chat gpt told us in the first place 
and uh, might even try these. I'm going to bring all of these effects in. And we can see how they affect this sound that's completely different than what we had in uh, in Polymax a little bit earlier. So, um, so that's probably the OTT. Yeah, that's probably the yeah, OTT not working on this. We'd have to go and play around with it and uh, that'll be for another day. Let's see if we're... No. Let's try the... No, Resonator is not going to help it either. No, we're... Uh, these. Are... Oh, this is nice. It's not really... Uh... A super saw anymore but the the tremolo does help so um okay so midi modulation uh will modulate the parameters like filter cutoff that's if we wanted to make make a bit of a track but uh we'll leave that for something different then we can record record a, a track with it so um okay so this is our sound and I like it. Um, okay, so that's what we've got. So we're gonna I'm gonna rename this uh, Super Saw, and we'll go back to ChatGPT. Did we have have it loaded already? Okay, so. Um, This one I tried once. Tell me a joke about Ableton Live. Oops, live. Okay, that's okay, figured it out. <laughs> Why did the music producer break up with Ableton? Because every time they tried to make a connection, it just kept looping back to their issues. That's actually not a horrible joke. <laughs> that's that's pretty good. It, it actually shows that they understand what, um, you know, what Ableton is and how it's used. And that's, I'm actually impressed with that one. It could like shorten it and turn that into a t-shirt. Um, why did the, why did the DJ bring a ladder to the Ableton concert? Because they wanted to reach the high notes. Oh. Um, another. Why did the Ableton project file go to therapy? Man, too many issues with its tracks and needed some serious compression. I mean, I don't know why. <laughs> I find that funny, but I don't even like, it's not funny, but it is. Okay, another. Um, no, need to scroll down here. Why did the music producer take their computer to therapy? Because their Ableton live sessions needed some emotional support. They just couldn't find the right balance. No, I don't like that one. Um, Another. Why did the Ableton user become a gardener? Because they wanted to learn how to create the perfect arrangement outside the DAW. I don't, I don't get it. Let's do, let's bunch, bunch the, <laughs> do a bit more at a time. Okay, why did the Ableton producer bring a notebook to the studio to take some serious notes on their noteworthy beats? No, that's, uh, what's an Ableton producer's favorite exercise? Side chaining because it, helps them keep everything in perfect balance. That's like in the top five of what we've had so far. Why did the DJ switch from Ableton to a cooking show? Because they wanted to spice up their tracks with a little bit more flavor. <laughs> I like that one. I Yeah, I like that one. That's a good one. I mean, it has nothing to do with Ableton specifically, but still, that's not bad. Um, how does Ableton respond to relationship problems? It tries to find a resolution, but often ends up stake it stuck in a repetitive loop. That's sort of funny because it actually understands um, the nature of Ableton compared to other DAWs because because of the you know the looping in the in the session view. So what did uh, the Ableton set say to the crowded dance floor? Are you ready for the drop? Because I'm about to bring the house down. I don't get it. But anyways, okay. Um, and uh, yeah, so I don't know. Let's leave it at that. And uh, I don't know. That was fun. And I'll uh, 
I'll try to find, I'll, I'll put a good list of questions. And if you have other questions you, I should ask, let me know in the comments if you're watching, if you're watching this after the, the live stream and uh, we'll try, try them next time. There's one I wanted to try and I'll do that on a different stream or video. Um, I wanted to do uh, movie trailer drums and have it walk me through some interesting things we could do with it. Uh, I always like doing, because there, there's one thing I do just before I go. Um, I created this. Let's do, uh, if we do conga, I just want uh, a bunch of conga drums or some sort of a kit. No, uh, let's do, Oh, that's why <laughs> I was looking at her. All right, let's go back to Conga. Um, yeah, this is exactly what I want. So there's this, uh, there's this plugin called Big Bang Cinematic and the plugin, the sounds in it are amazing. And it's got this, actually I might, I think I have it set up on here. You know what? I don't want to try it on here in case it, it starts doing it again. But it had this problem. No, you know what? I think we're I think we're good. Um, it's from Sonavox, and it's got this interesting thing in it where I'm gonna work with this. So if we do, uh, man, I haven't used this in a long time. Note repeat. I think we have to do learn first and then note repeat. No. Remove learn. Do note repeat. Why doesn't this load? Oh, there we go. I think it's. And then if we bring this to eight notes, I think this is. Actually, we'll do 16th maybe. You can tell it's sort of just trying to find uh Oh, you know what? I think it might be better on it. No, 16th is better. Anyways, it it will actually keep it on even though I'm not doing it exactly on beat, it will actually have it sound It'll have it on the grid. So what we're gonna do, uh, what I did is uh, this for a while, what was happening with this plugin is it kept crashing every time you, it would get MIDI input. So I created a, uh, an, arp, an arpeggiator. Um, preset that basically does the same thing. So if we go, oh no, this isn't where I want it. Where do we put those congas? Okay, here. So we're gonna drop it on here. So if, uh, if I turn this off, oh, we're still on the, <laughs> the other one. If I turn this one off and uh, where are these sounds? There we go. It's just playing anything, but it's not it's not on beat. But as soon as I turn this on, you can't really tell that much. But see, you can tell it's sort of a little bit more on the grid. Um, so what I want to do is do this, and we'll ask ChatGPT next time. Um, for some tips on how to get the drum sounds so and we'll throw this on and see what we come up with. But uh, anyways, for now, let's leave it there. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate you. And uh, yeah, I'll see you in the next video.